Static is one of my favorite DC characters ever. I love the show. I love his comics. I love everything about him. The only problem is we've got some comics and like a good TV show, but we don't have anything to really put him into the mainstream. But what could a mainstream Static Shock project look like? Well, I have an idea for a show, a live action show about Static Shock that has the chance to be very, very good. And if done properly, it could introduce a world of characters into James Gunn's DCU. Well, there's one thing that we need to get right. The atmosphere. For this show, I want to, you know, maybe change things up a little bit. Or not really change, but put my style onto it. I want Dakota City to feel gritty. But not like Gotham gritty. Like a real world city gritty. Like Detroit or Compton or something. If you didn't grow up in Detroit or in a black community like I did... You may not understand this, but it's hard to explain. It's just a certain feel I want to it. But at the same time, I don't want to overdo it. Remember, this is just a normal city. There aren't gangs running around everywhere. And another thing I feel like could really help set a tone for this show is music. So I really want this show to feel like the song Duckworth by Kendrick Lamar. If you know that song, you get it like the second part but if you haven't i really recommend you do a couple of other songs that i feel go really well with the theme that i'm going for is fear by kendrick lamar the specifically the second part the story of oj by jay-z kill jay-z by jay-z and the world is yours by nas if you know or have listened to any of those songs that's the type of vibe that i'm trying to go for but i'm not gonna stick myself within those parameters so you can change it up every little bit now a problem that i ran into is that i couldn't decide whether i wanted to do it from the comic angle where he's kind of already a superhero like established and we touch on his origin later or if we do a true like origin tv show where we see him gaining his powers in the first episode and he builds over the course of the season but i had really good ideas or Decent ideas, at least in my head, for what like a little intro or overview to the first episode could be. Okay, so this is the intro to where he's already established. Enjoy. We open on Dakota City, a nice, wealthy looking town, actually. It doesn't look as gritty as I'd want it to look. But then we hear a gunshot. We're then put into a convenience store. There's four men with guns, hostages tied up on the ground. One of the armed men starts yelling, and as he's yelling, we get an overview of the area surrounding the convenience store. As we glimpse around the convenience store, it looks tattered. Not damaged from anything, but, you know, used. Vacant houses everywhere, all painted with graffiti. Suddenly, another of the armed men responds to the one that was yelling, and we're put into his perspective he's talking until suddenly a small skinny man not too small though maybe medium height walks in they tell him to get on the ground when suddenly the lights flash off our pov character looks around confused not being able to see anything due to the darkness until suddenly a neon blue lightning blast comes out of nowhere knocking one of the criminals into the wall It illuminates the store for only a second, but in that split second, he gets a close look at who's doing it. It's a young boy. How could this be? (laughs) Then out of nowhere, our hero starts to talk and he's just insulting them. He flashes around the room, taking the men out one by one until he gets to our POV character. He shoots him with a blast right out of the store as we switch our point of view. Seeing as he lands outside, knocked out cold he then begins to help the hostages getting to a young teenage girl with red hair he begins to talk don't worry it's okay i'm cut to intro that sounds perfect to me just as an opening scene at least 
this is a scene that I feel like if anyone saw, they'd be interested in watching it. And overall, it's just cool. It shows a cool side to Static, and it pays homage to the original comic in a way. But remember, I said I had two. So this is going to be the one where he isn't established as a hero yet. And it's just going to be like a brief overview of the episode. This starts with Virgil skateboarding to school. As he's skating, we get different angles showing this city that he lives in. As he's skating, we can see the streets of Dakota City. Remember, it's not titter-tattered, torn up, but it's definitely aged. A couple of places are shut down, a bit of graffiti places, but there's also beautiful art. Specifically, some artwork depicting icons. A big reason why I feel like this show has great potential to add a whole different side to the DCU is because a static show can be our gateway into the milestone characters. I'll go into more depth on it later, but I feel like this could be a great doorway into seeing characters like Icon. But back to the story, he gets to school and I, for some reason I want this to be a one take shot of him just walking around the hallways, greeting everyone that he comes by. He specifically says hey to his friend Larry, saying that you'll see him at his locker in a bit. As he's putting his stuff away in his locker, he hears a bunch of loud people. It's BM, or at least that's what everyone calls him. No one knows why they call him that. They just do. He's laughing and joking around with his friends, harassing female students as they walk by them. Virgil then meets up with his friend Larry at his locker. They laugh and joke around for a bit until... Someone walks into the school, and there he's like, oh, Virgil, you've got to meet them. It's a teenage, red-headed girl. Her name's Frida. Larry introduces the two, and Static is instantly, like, she's pretty. <laughs> I wouldn't call it in love, but there's he's definitely infatuated. He starts laughing and joking around with her, and they talk about how she's the new kid. But then she asked if she could get help finding her locker. Larry has to go to class, but Virgil was thinking about skipping his first period anyway, so he was going to show her. He shows Frida her locker, and BM and his posse come, and they start terrorizing her. But Frida's denying all of their advances, I guess. But, you know, Virgil, the jokester he is, he starts making jokes at his expense. And Frida says that she has to get to class and that she'll find it on her own. BM turns to Virgil, saying how he messed up his chance with that girl. And Virgil antagonizes him even more, saying he never had a chance anyway and stuff like that. Until suddenly, they jump him. They jump Virgil. So Virgil sits there, crying and alone, until he texts Larry. And Larry comes back. He cleans him up a little bit and takes him to class, but at the end of the day, they have a talk. Larry tells him he can't let those white boys push him around, and to meet him at the docks by eight, he has to get back. Those words, get back, they reverberate in his head, echoing, get back. I have to get back. Even when he's getting dressed, you have to get back. So he goes to the docks at eight. Larry Hands him a pew-pew and tells him to handle business. Saying that BM and his crew hang around there. Larry then leaves, leaving Virgil on his own. And Virgil, then he goes a distance away from them, but still close. BM and his crew are bragging about how they just stole someone's purse. When Virgil aims the gun at them. Until he decides that he can't do it. And that's not the type of person that he is. He drops the gun. When suddenly he hears police screaming. They're screaming about how this is the last time they'll let this crew get away from them. When suddenly the entire area is filled with gas. The gas begins to knock Virgil out. But he's conscious enough to crawl over to a nearby bush. Hiding himself. But what he sees from in the bush is disturbing. Everyone, everyone affected by the gas, everyone that was at the docks, mutating, gaining weird abilities. And suddenly he sees a burst of flames. 
when the gas finally knocks him out. And that's how I do the origin part, at least. I was going to do how he, like, finds out he has his powers. But I feel like that's something that come that could come naturally. Many of you may be asking, why a TV show? Why not just give Static a movie? Well, I feel in the TV platform, we could, you know, fully develop these characters the way they should be developed. And it allows you to tell a plethora of stories that many people might not have been able or have ever seen. But very importantly, we need to make sure we have connections between the characters. And the TV show makes it so much easier to do that. Once you see the love and feelings that Virgil has for Frida over a course of episodes, it makes it much more heartbreaking when she ends up hooking up with Larry. And back to what I said earlier, this could really introduce us to many of the Milestone characters. Now, Static is undebatably the most popular Milestone character, and I feel like if we start with him and introduce more characters through Static, so many people can fall in love with these wonderful characters. There could be an episode where Icon or Rocket appears. Or maybe even the man whose name I don't know if I can say on YouTube. The possibilities are endless. And if we work or if this would actually exist, this could build its own part of the DCU. And not only that, but it could be one of the best parts of the DCU. But thank you for watching or listening to me ramble. Um, If this gets enough views or likes, I'll do a full pitch for like an entire series, like a full eight to 10 episodes, a pitch for each episode. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed watching. Consider liking and subscribing. And if there's any tips you have for YouTube, please drop them down in the comments below, like better mics or whatever, or how not to sound dead all the time.